This is the place to go for anime, manga, comics, video games, all pop culture information. This is the place that you need to be. This program is brought to you by Blacken Studios Entertainment Division. Remember, it's Blacken. This is Casey Kasem, and you're listening to The Elijah Bailey Show, uh, Oklahoma's favorite podcast, bringing you 100% auditorial pleasure. Thanks for downloading The Elijah Bailey Show from iTunes or BlackStudios.com. And here's a word from some of the folks that make it possible for you to hear this show for free every Thursday. Providing bankruptcy services throughout the state of Oklahoma, Bowler & Associates is a bankruptcy law firm based in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Their mission is to relieve you from threat of debt collectors, garnishments, repossessions, tax levies, foreclosures, and much more. Backed by more than 20 years of experience in the legal field, they excel in finding the quickest, most effective, and most affordable solution to all your legal and financial troubles. You can find them at Bowler Law on Facebook and also visit the website at www.bowlerlawfirm.com. Reach them at 405-733-3000. Email them at bankruptcy at bowlerandassociates.com. And three, two, one. One and welcome back to another episode of the Elijah Bailey Show. Ah, it feels good to be back, and it feels good to uh, run that back twice. <laughs> it's like the old days, <laughs> dude. Man, I don't know what's going on, but they need to fix their shit. Might be that new merger they got, or you know, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, maybe. <clears throat> but. This is the fourth week of the month, and as you know, each week is a different theme. Uh, the first week every month is comics, second week is anime, third week is video games, and the fourth week is the Bailey Bugle, where we give you all the hot topics, all the hot takes, and the latest news from around the net. And today, uh, we got a lot of shit. There was another show planned. There was literally another show planned until DC Fandom came along, and I was like, fuck that. We got to talk about this shit, because as we were talking about Batman just a minute ago, he might be that motherfucker. He he came through with the hands and damn near took Kevin Conroy's spot from me. He said, I am vengeance. I said, oh, shit. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I know. I know. Your head's like cut off on the camera. <laughs> yeah. Why is it always a seat thing with you? Every single time, it's always your seat. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it did. They look like they're going to give Marvel a run for their money now. And uh, it's about time. But with that, turn that nasty music on, sir. It's time. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, nice. Well, we'll start the show with that one piece chatter right now with episode 233 of the Elijah Bailey show, the Bailey Bugle August edition. A fucking long ass title. <laughs> That's a fucking long ass title. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. Hey. Yeah, thank you for the for the shirt compliment, woman. <laughs> it's like she's not even your wife. <laughs> custom thongs, custom uh, baby onesies. Oh, nice. Chafe. It doesn't chafe. That's what you... Yeah. Thank you. Me... See. I think... (laughs) The vinyl... Wait a second. You have self-heating drawers over there? Oh, my God. Okay. Now... The technology I've never seen before. 
See, I need a sponsorship because it doesn't look like just me undies and Manscaped are looking out for your balls. It looks like the intertaffling is as well. That's a, it's a commercial right there. Oh, is this what you do? Is this what you do? See, I can hear my audio. Oh, yeah, I can't hear your audio. <laughs> I like just did a playback and I was like, oh, yeah, I can't hear Buck at all. Um, so that's a weird conversation. Uh, Deandra is in chat. She said, hey, and he was giving a shout out and telling us about her clothing line now where she makes everything, T-shirts, masks, and I threw in there thongs, baby onesies. And that's when the degenerativeness between the both of us continued. There's music. I hear music. I don't know why he's playing the music, but I hear it. That's the intro music. Um, but yeah, contact DeAndre Taplin for your wear Ooh, needs now. Rusty. There, got that okay. resolved. So, okay, perfect. Yeah, you can hear me good now. So, I like I was saying, it. you say what? Ish. I kind of gave him a playback through it all. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So you gave the shout out and whatnot, and then the vinyl that heats up the balls. Well, that's the part that I didn't like. We were talking about thongs, mm -hmm. and you were saying that there's special vinyl technology that warms up yes, your genitals. Yes. So I said, dedicated by designs, they got special vinyl that on the underwear or thongs, whatever you prefer, uh, it warms it warms up. So you don't have to worry about a uh, you know dry, cold chafing. balls or cold chafing balls. because it the vinyl rubs against the skin. The and friction. instead of calling it's a all about yeah, instead of it doesn't doing a rash. It does like a heating thing to where Sensation. it doesn't feel, it feels good. It feels yeah, good. For his yeah. and her pleasure. Yeah. The only thing you have to watch out is stank balls. And that's just. It's stank balls do come in strong. They, yeah. after, you know, sometimes you might be able to wear your drawers like a day and a half, maybe. I'm not um, co signing before, on anything right Before now. <laughs> the stank balls come in with these, mm -hmm. the stank balls would definitely uh, be there in six hours. So yeah. if you know you're going out, especially with the cold weather coming up, if you know you're going out or, <laughs> you know, traveling or, or hiking and you know yeah. you're going to be in a cold conditions. Uh, it'll, it's going to be dangerous. Well, it'll be good, but just wear it for only six hours and you, you, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. All yes. right. So uh, as we were saying before, today's show is all about, well, primarily about DC fandom. We have some other news, uh, but there's a lot of just a lot of joy this week and i think the news came in all at one point in time and we we're like you know what this is amazing uh so this has to be on the bailey bugle but before we get into back into the body shop what is this one piece debate this dispute that you and joshy boy so i'm uh what questions do you have young one okay so josh hits me up and he's talking about one piece we're just having like discussion you know he's like i think in the three sixties now um oh okay yeah so he's, he's been putting in work and but you know he's, me. Not, he's skipping, right? He's not doing filler. Yeah, well, he said there's really not too many fillers that he's actually having to skip. Having to um, skip, yeah. Yeah, he said there's not too many fillers inside the story. Um, or it's just kind of like what you said. You know, there's certain fillers, but they do a, a good job at pertaining about something about the main story, so you really don't want to mm -hmm. miss it. So anyways, I want to make this quick. I want to jump in D.C. But um, you know me. I don't mind spoilers at all. You can spoil the dog mess out of something, and I'm still going to watch yeah. it most likely. So he was spoiling some things on me, and he was telling me uh, about Luffy's L's he's taken. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we got on this, this whole topic, and uh, he was like, man, Michael, which is his little brother, uh, who's mm -hmm. all the way caught up in One Piece, uh, was Good talking job. to him about Luffy only technically takes one L. And I guess it's the person who made the huge uh, scar on his chest. Mm-hmm. Josh was like, I don't know how I feel about that. He said, because you're at the part where he's about to fight Crocodile, and I'm pretty sure Crocodile gave him an L. Now, Luffy came back and beat Crocodile, but Luffy ultimately did take uh, a nail. He was like, call me uh, back when you get there okay. and let me know what you say. Because Michael swears up and down, Luffy only has one L in the whole series so far. So I went back, and I actually watched that fight today, and mm -hmm. Crocodile dow gave him an l to the See? point now is it as dramatic as the other one that's coming up down the road from what i hear no, no it's not but at the same time 
like I was telling Josh, A, an L is an L. Whether yes. you get knocked out the ring or not, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. an L. B, I feel like the only reason why Luffy even came out alive during that is because of a plot hole. And the plot hole is that A, Crocodile is someone that got onto one of his agents for not confirming a kill. He chose not to confirm the kill. Second, there was an opportunity that Crocodile could have completely like dried out his uh-huh. whole body. Yeah. He chose not to. Mm-hmm. And then, what was the third plot hole? Oh, third plot hole was that throughout this whole scene with Crocodile, you clearly could tell he gives yeah. no Fs for nobody. Like, he sends oh, yeah. random sandstorms out just because he knows somebody might die. Get fucked up. Yeah. yeah. So he has no care for anybody. But for him to not completely wipe out Luffy all of a sudden, and he's a very emotional person. I mean, he, he's, mm-hmm. he has a cool demeanor. He's very laid back. But yeah. He does two things. You can tell he's an emotional person. He pillow talks too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for someone that's, <laughs> for someone to have such a mysterious cloak around him, no one knew yeah. who he was. When you get close to him, whole... he be talking a lot of stuff. Like hey, Robin was sitting there just hey, like, hey, so hey. why'd you do this? Um, mm. <laughs> so I thought you didn't yeah. like him. Oh. What else? Okay. No, so no, that's no, your plan? Going. That's your whole game plan? Yes. Oh. See, he does too much pillow talking. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all that just started mm-hmm. once, you know, he met up with his uh, three, four generals, how many number it was. So it was it was kind of weird. It was a weird. different – it's like the, the writer – and I understand they couldn't kill off Luffy at 100 episodes when they had planned this yeah. going a lot further. But I felt like there was plot holes that was put in to make to Luffy. To push the story forward. Yeah, to push forward. the story forward. Uh, which there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. You know, I'm not knocking no. it. But that's the only yeah. thing I felt like Luffy. Because Luffy did this one thing. And this is something yeah. that a lot of anime characters do when they have effed up. Like, oh, it's, it got real. Mm-hmm. Whenever you got a shirt on mm-hmm. and you have a hole in your shirt from the front that matches the same hole in your back, yeah. you now become a remix, as I call it. Because mm-hmm. at that moment, you're trying to figure out what's going on. Goku's done it. Vegeta's <laughs> done it. They, everybody's done it. But you got this yeah. really dazed look in your eyes. And then you start saying, uh, 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 what's, uh, uh sh- sh- shit. Yeah. And Luffy went through that. If it wasn't for the plot mm-hmm. holes, I think Luffy, you know, technically would have died or something else would have happened. But I want to ask See, you, yeah. how many do you consider that an L? And how many L's have you felt like Luffy had at where you uh, I'm, with, I'm with you and Josh on the L situation because I know exactly what Mike's saying. He's saying because Luffy, even though, you know, Nico Robin helps him out. Miss, I think she's Miss Sunday at that time. Yes. Right. Yeah. Miss Sunday helps him out. And then he comes back to defeat Carcadile, blah, blah, blah. That kind of happens a couple of other times and then there, there's other ways that he gets around situations where he does they're learning experiences mm-hmm. and i for the way that luffy's growth works he's not super intelligent he's very dedicated hard working committed and he's one he wants to be the tough the toughest and he cares about his crew so he does take l's to get better but does he die because in the pirate world the ultimate i mean an l is death and as you see other pirates in the series, they're just getting killed off, like, easy. And that's every time that nobody wants them around, boom, sword slice, shot, whatever. And I could I could see that stretch saying, oh, well, Luffy has never died. He comes back. You know, that's just to rally his strength. But I, he, he takes L's all the time. That's part of how, <laughs> that's how he gets stronger. Okay, that's how he gets so we stronger. heard it first from the, the one piece. Yeah. Uh, Writer or, 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 or doctor himself, Elijah Bailey, um, yeah. Luffy takes L's Cause all the time. I think, <laughs> I think what Oda did with One Piece made a difference is your favorite characters, your favorite villains, everybody takes an L. Everybody has to get back up and overcome. And the people who are the fucking strongest are the ones that got the most tragic ass backstories, took the most L's and said, you know, I've had enough of this shit and made some of themselves. And now they're at a point where Luffy technically gave one of the big, big, big bads an L, but he didn't kill him. He didn't whoop they ass. And then another big bad gave Luffy an L and just put him in jail. So you see how yeah. you know, the L's work in this. But regardless, an L's yeah. an L, right? An L. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. An L. Thank he you. Thank you. I just had to clear that air. Um, 
here on the show. On the show. Yeah. And, and, and that, that, was a, that was a question from Joshy Boy. He wanted me to – he's like, we got to ask Mr. Bailey about this. We got to ask Mr. Bailey about this. So well, I will relay that you. information to him. But anyways, enough of one piece. We're talking about <sighs> yes. our body shop. Uh, Elijah, yes. go ahead and just dive right on in that. Okay, so back into the body shop. Now, yesterday and today, I've actually had to rest and ice my knee. I had a knee injury earlier from work, and I've been on vacation. I've been resting my shoulder. So that way, because mobility, my shoulder, I was having pain about right here. Now I can raise it right here before I start feeling anything in my shoulder. So the recovery's, you know, working really well. Uh, I've been doing 10 laps in the backyard, a couple uh, hundred jumping jacks, then going out front with the jump rope doing uh, my next round will be 600 skips. And then, yeah, the hundred push-ups and setups, um, 10 to 15. I'm thinking about upping it to 20 minutes of yoga stretching. And then I'm doing a couple of pull-ups just to check mobility and function. Uh, my vacation is just really recovery and resting. That's good. That's what a vacation is for, to kind of yeah. get your mind and your body right. Regroup. Mm-hmm. Regroup. Yeah. What have you been uh, working out over there? Well, me and Kanan started, you know, school started this week. So How is been, that, dude? That is how, interesting. <laughs> how did you feel? Did you hear what Stitt did? Uh-uh. Okay, so. Well, he's done a lot of weird things. Okay. Things. So. Weird. It's just stupid. We've. It is. We found out that the Democrats and Republicans were holding um, a meeting to try to mandate Oklahoma to lock down and mask because they found out that Stitt hid information from the White House. I did see that. Yeah, that Oklahoma was already a state that was in the red. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to figure out how that's going to affect everything now because case numbers are still rising. And if we were in the red before, what are the actual numbers? So now it's like this big ass investigation. I was like, dude, there's been reports of kids, some uh, high school kids and then kids at uh, UCO getting sick, yep. teachers. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Yeah, so. I think I think everybody's stuck on a, a factuation of I got under control when you don't. Yeah. yeah. Um, but school has been interesting because, you know, he kind of stayed. We kind of did like a school thing already, um, mm-hmm. even when school was completely done. Yeah. But it's a lot more of a we do. Vir- he's enrolled in virtual education right now. So mm-hmm. it's a lot more just having to stay on top of them. And I'm hoping it pans yeah. out a little bit easier once he gets used to used kind to. of being self, um, self-discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but the morning start out, we have a breakfast, a morning meeting before school, like just discussing meditational things and just things mm-hmm. like what, how you feeling, how's the weather, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then it starts in language arts uh a little brain break and then math and then lunch and recess and then after that we come back with science a brain break and nice. then social studies and then arts and nice, well, we got to yeah. put it down on the schedule uh but it's a lot more in- intuitive even for myself um mm-hmm. but the cool thing is about on recess we and him been playing a lot more soccer uh mm. the first day <laughs> it was still me getting used to like i guess being outside during like 12 o'clock weather <laughs> yeah. in oklahoma <laughs> and you know, just getting my breath up and everything. But uh, mm-hmm. that's pretty much what we've been focusing on. Then I think Friday, we took a lot more serious version of a soccer game. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, I, okay. I'm, I'm loving it in a way. It's helping me yeah. and his bond even stronger, which I didn't think it would. Uh, I didn't think our bond would, could even become stronger. But yeah. And it's teaching me a lot more patience. Um, mm-hmm. and it's helping me to stay productive because I really can't do anything else while he's learning, like, at least yeah. for now. Because yeah. – I have to stay engaged. I constantly have to. I have to play the role of the teacher, and that's what yeah. I hope a lot of the parents are, you know, who are forcing uh, the situation. Fortunate. Yeah, really check in on your kid while they're doing these classes and these these steps. You know, yeah. Even it because most of most of this, uh, this is all I, new for everybody. It's all new for everybody, and uh, it's it's not a challenge, but it's definitely something different. Um, so soccer has been my main thing. Uh, I've been watching the way I'm eating. Um, trying to take in a little bit more calories now. Uh, which I could tell is giving me a lot more energy throughout the day. Yeah, uh, and that's really about it. Yeah, that's really that about bad, the body. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Some my booty, and my, my my booty, and my my legs are definitely feeling the the running back and forth from soccer. I know what you mean. My calves and uh, apparently my knee, because I went out and I was like, you know what? I need to go ahead and start rehabbing this knee anyway to jump rope and then to skip. You know me, I'll do 100. Like, well, let's just add 100 every single day. Yeah. Let's just add 200 every day. It's, you know, it's easy. So I ran up and down the block 
and then just shit. That next day, my neighbor was like, "No, nope, you need to, yeah, done. you need to rest you're this done. bitch." So I'm like, "Okay, so elevate, ice it, uh, massage, and I'm doing my stretching just to make sure everything's just nice and fluid and loose as I get back." I my posture is a lot better, which is helping because I'm streaming a lot more, mm-hmm. and uh, I can sit in this nice, comfy respawn chair. Just all back, all nice and straight, not having to try to lean on the pad or anything. Just feels good. But that is it for the body shop. You want to go, uh, let's take a pause for the cause and come back for segment two. And then, uh, yeah, that's when we'll hit them with the uh, black comic book character that matters. And then we'll go into what's new in gaming. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome to the video. Hey, this is Jamie Lindbergh, host of Upbeat Urbanism, a podcast where we seek to have an open dialogue about what it takes to create healthy, intentional, sustainable communities, one conversation at a time. Each episode is an interview with a city planner, leader, developer, real estate professional, or community builder. To listen, search for Upbeat Urbanism wherever you find podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at UUrbanism and on Facebook at Upbeat Urbanism. Devote yourself to your community around you and devote yourself to creating something that gives you purpose and meaning. Until then, keep it upbeat. Mm. And we're back. Kilted. This is like old school times. No, I, I was dancing here with the uh, with the games. I, okay, I started see. playing this bad boy. Can you see this? Uh, hold on, let me switch back to the screen. Uh, Attack on Titan. Yeah, I did. I see. I can see it on your screen, but uh, I didn't. Uh, when I was going through the stream labs, I, I saw that picture you had of it. Oh yeah, 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 dude. It's uh, it's been nice to get back into it because it's making me relive the show and really think about anime narrative. Mm-hmm. And I, I might have to start it back over from the beginning before this next season starts. Mm. Um, but talk about characters and seasons and, and things that we enjoy. We have this segment every single episode uh, representing whatever that episode is, whether it's comics, anime, or video games. Our Tayose or the diversity, the black comic character that matters this week is going to be Joseph Robbie Robertson. You may know him as the editor in chief of the Daily Bugle, formerly city editor of the front line and reporter and he is also a soldier joseph robbie roberts is a character published by marvel comics usually in the stories featuring the superhero spider-man so he's the black man of reason i I don't think he's ever tried to steer anybody wrong in the cartoon in the comic he's always had that voice of reason i think in one version of spider-man he's also he he may be uh date aunt may i think that sounds like him yeah you know you know aunt may is like sound like our brothers hey hey Hey, aunt may He's only How you doing, doing? <laughs> He's about the same age, but I feel like he would be like Tell the little boy baby. to go ahead and go save the world while me and you Netflix mm. and chill. Mm. Let me make you I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the hot press right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's created by Stan Lee and John uh Ramita Senior Ramada Senior. He first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 51, August 1967, and has since endured as a supporting character of The Wall Crawler. Robbie Robertson was one of the first black characters in comics to play a serious supporting role rather than act as comic relief. And that's one of the big things right there. That's one of the main reasons I picked uh, Robbie is because they treated him with respect in the cartoon. If you guys remember the cartoon, if you don't, uh, Disney Plus has the old Spider-Man, old X-Men cartoons on there. Go watch those. Uh, even in the comics, he was highly respected. And he was somebody, a soundboard that Peter could bounce his conscience and his, um, his uh, well, yeah, his, just his conscience off of him. He wanted to know if what he was doing was right. He wanted to know if he was looking at it logically in times that he was confused. And he couldn't involve people that might have played a part in whatever it was, like Doc Connors or Aunt May or J. Jonah Jameson. So... Um, he was usually, uh, yeah, he has usually been a high ranking editor at the New York newspaper, the daily bugle and a close friend and confidant to the publisher, J Jonah Jameson acting as the voice of reason in Jameson's campaign to, uh, discredit Spider-Man. He is more friendly and supportive of Peter Parker, as well as others of the daily, uh, bugle staffers. And one of the main things about Robbie 
is that when they were picking actors, they really wanted to showcase a more endearing side of a of a character while everybody else is supposed to be this over dramatized caricature of what they saw in the comics and so they the actor bill nunn played robbie uh in sam raimi spider-man and i think that was a great representation if you go back and watch that um but that's our uh, comic book character black comic book character that matters today so make sure go out buy some spider-man comics read up make sure robbie's in the comic and, um yeah. rewatch it disney plus hell yeah uh, oh, you got that sound bite. The what's new in gaming? No, just oh. that's the new one, folks. What's new in gaming? That's, what's what's that's, new that's, new gaming. Gaming. that's it. Hey, folks. Okay, so what's new in gaming? We have a couple things uh, to talk about now. If you go to patreon.com forward slash Elijah Bailey show, you can go through the show notes and hit the hyperlinks, and it'll take you straight to the articles where you can see pictures, videos, yada yada, right there. Uh, Death Loop. This was a game that I was excited about when we when we saw coming from uh, Arcane Lion, and we got news about a week ago that's been delayed till 2021, along with. You know, some of our other games that we were expecting, like Halo uh, Infinite. And I think there was one more that was just announced that's going to have to wait till 2021. Um, I thought Deathloop was going to be cool because it kind of reminded me of uh, Tom Cruise's Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. And it was just... To where really you're constantly something. having to, like, die and replan different elements of your life. Because this was... I remember, I remember this now. Yeah, this game was, like, a first-person shooter from... Or if I want to say, and you did like when you die, it's almost like you rewind back. Mm -hmm. And And then what's so crazy about it is that the enemies change too. Yeah. So they're not doing the exact same thing over and over again. Yeah, that's what I was like. Oh yeah, I want to play that because oh, I have been told you. I can go ahead and tell everybody I beat The Last of Us Part Two. Mm, Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Great fucking story. Uh, I'm still playing on Tuesdays. We're in chapter seven and there's 10 chapters to the story. And I'm also playing grounded. I'm going to go through the game um, because we talked about this last episode through the grounded and with the ultimate permadeath on. So if I die once, I have to start the game all over from it took me 30 hours to beat this game. So 30 hours of gameplay. If I die once starting all over Hmm. Uh, because that That changes the ending. Yeah, but it changes the ending, though. Uh, the end credits so yeah it would suck but it makes me feel like the old nintendo day is like there's uh, no that's save. exactly how it was there was no save point we'll get that <laughs> get that weak sauce out of here you leave it on all day and then we got to go buy a new one because you didn't uh, burnt it out but uh yeah i really wanted this game i'm excited about now hopefully you know with the pushbacks of these games hopefully they're just you know making sure it's just right for us yeah and what, what else we got on the yeah, i'll go and hit on the next bit of news you like how I did that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Amazon Twitch Prime is now getting gaming, getting more free content. Sorry, I said that wrong. Or I just said I threw extra space in there when I should. It's okay. But anyways, Twitch Prime has been rebranded as Gaming Prime or Prime Gaming, Amazon has announced today. The owners of Twitch. Um, Twitch Prime, if you don't know, we're not on Twitch right now, but it's a source that Elijah streams most of his gameplay on. Yep. And it's a video game source where you can watch other video games and content creators stream uh, whatever they're particularly streaming to you. And they have a chat system. And they also have a, uh, a status on there called Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime is where you can subscribe to uh, content creators, giving them support yep. with your Amazon Prime membership. Um, and it gives you different perks and awards that whatever the content creator may have available uh, anyway, so with that backstory being said, Twitch Prime is a service included in any Amazon Prime subscription. It's getting rebranded today. Amazon launched Prime Gaming, which will replace Twitch Prime going forward and offer even more free game content for Amazon Prime members. Twitch Prime has been one of the more overlooked sources of for free games and loot every month compared to the other subscription-based services like PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live Gold. Despite the fact that every one of Amazon's 150 million Prime customers have access to it. Um, so, yeah, changing the name, which I think is smart. Um, yeah. Streamline it. They've yeah, streamline anyway. it. Prime Gaming. That just fits better instead of saying Twitch. Because uh, even a lot of Twitch users, I don't even think they realize that Twitch yeah. Prime or Twitch, yeah, whatever it was called, gave you 
weekly free games just no, like didn't. everybody else does so because it's, it's the the format when it pulls up you just have notifications and yeah it's like, and it's, it's, time, it's, it's messy time. it's super yeah. messy let's just yeah. keep it real it's, it's so messy um yeah yeah um and so now let's uh, that's all the news we want to cover because we have a, a shit ton of trailers that we want to try to watch now the one trailer that they did not have so i would say we did have a <laughs> crap ton of trailers but i guess they all didn't God. move over only only six of okay. them did which, which is still a lot move over uh we got i might have to go in there and grab one real quick uh but i got okay. suicide squad the kill of Ju- okay. the kill the justice league wonder woman 1984 the suicide okay. squad teaser uh with all the um uh characters characters in it. yeah okay. and then a flash season seven and Batman okay. DC fandom, so I'm, I'm missing a couple. Okay. So we'll. Okay. You want to take a quick break, real quick, and I can see if I can try to drag them over, or you want to just go uh, with it. I'm trying to think. I thought we I could dragged hit them the one, over, but we could hit the ones we got and then take a break and then move them over. Or yeah, do you let's want do to that. just? Okay, yeah. That way we don't have to stop right after another one. Yeah. Behind the curtains, folks. Yes, you okay, get it live. So you get it. Let's live. go ahead and <laughs> pull up that the Batman trailer. Um, now. This is by uh, Matt Reeves. This shit looks fucking phenomenal. Uh, The Batman writer-director Matt Reeves unveiled the first trailer for the film during the final panel for DC Fandom uh, event on Saturday. The moody teaser set uh, set to Nirvana something in the way focuses most on the persona of the Riddler, played by Paul Dano. Oh, look at that. Just looking at the Warner Brothers come up. It's, it's, God, this is so beautiful. Um, but uh, focus on the Riddler, who is leaving a series of deadly teasers for the Batman and Commissioner Gordon, played by Jeffrey Wright, which I'm glad we got a black Commissioner Gordon because I like his tone and cadence, especially. Have you watched uh, Westworld? No. Westworld, you, you need to watch it because he plays off of uh, what's old boy that did Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Anthony Hopkins yeah mm-hmm. he plays like right of him as his right hand man and his delivery and presence is is beautiful and then once the story un- uh, unrolls and you find out more about him you're like damn this motherfucker can act but we also see Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman yeah. um, as she fights Robert Pattinson who beats the fuck out of the Joker's in he this did. trailer. He he lays some uh, a very lot of aggression. And he looks good. Like I have to Yeah, yeah. He don't look with him not wanting to work out. He he Yeah, he yeah. looked like he you know, definitely buffed up a little bit and uh you can see in his eyes. He got like a disturbed Bruce. Oh, he's emo. He's yeah, emo. He got disturbed he's got Bruce going angst. on like you know what? I'm I ain't gonna I'm gonna put my emotions on my chest and on my eyes. Where, That's right. Alfred, pass me the mascara. Pass mm. me the uh, the eyeshadow. <laughs> Ask I me need some more. Lipstick. Give me a lipstick. Them. Give me a lipstick, Alfred. Uh, hey, where are you going to put the pearls, Master Bruce? I'll put yeah. them up my ass. But it looks good. It looks really yeah. good. It Dude. got me excited. Uh, you get to see Penguin. Mm. Uh, you saw a little bit of Mr. Freeze up in there looking great. Um, Bro. Yeah. Yeah, that shit And is that good. Scarecrow like, in there as well? Uh, I don't know. Um. I don't think so. Okay. But I wasn't for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, let me see. It says uh, in the panel for the film, Reeve said the Batman won't be uh, an origin story per se, but it starts in year two of Batman's emergence. So that's why he's younger. That's why the suit is the way it is. And he's already established himself and working with the Gotham, Gotham City PD. When And when they show that shot down the hallway, it's fucking beautiful. It looks just like a comic book panel. Yeah. Um, but which Batman and several other iconic characters, Catman, the Riddler, and Penguin, played by Colin Farrell, are still in the early stages of their development. In exploring the corruption of the heart of the story, Batman also begins to uncover a large story of corruption within the city and how it may connect back to the vastly wealthy and powerful Wayne family, which sounds like some shit from the Court of Owls. Exactly. And at the end of this trailer, you see the Court of Owls at a moment mm. where they show like, you know, having the little face mask on with the, with the, yeah. with the white and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. yeah. and I think this is cool. Cause a lot of people probably don't even know about this type of story or year two, yeah. year two is referred to as year one is his first year as Batman. Correct. And then mm-hmm. this is the second year kind of why he's still, you know, a rookie Batman, if you say, yeah. 
because the first time in year one, he was like, had a grappling hook. It missed, fell all the way down into some trash can. was like kind of limping away and shit, you know, having to find his way. But I think some of the best comic stories, especially on DC sides, are like Jim Gordon uh, as he is a detective in Gotham City PD and then Batman starting out. Uh, even Alfred's story when he's in the military. Oops, oh, interesting. You know, but, um, my bad. No, you're good. Uh, what do we got next? What's going? Next, next one is the Suicide Squad, uh, massively long trailer wow. uh, that had to show you everybody named Mama who's going to be in it. But um, I love it because this is the Suicide Squad. Everybody is expendable. Every and it's like it's like lesser known criminals that have done so much bad shit they've racked up so many years mm-hmm. polka dot man that's fucking comical that they're putting polka dot man in here and he is you know uh who's playing him i think david Desmuchin yes is playing him. you're absolutely right so I, I like the cast i like the cast and rick flag i like that they made him look a little bit younger he's not as hardcore serious military he looks like he's got lighter sense of humor not such a not so kind of I like weird. how they got shark man in there or what's his bro, name? Bro, King, uh, King Shark. There we go. Yeah. King I fell Shark in love with him with the uh, DC animated over the top thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and then Harley in the, because um, they wanted this to be kind of like a period piece, the 1960s, 50s kind of feel to it. And Harley in her gear, the, the all leather. Mm-hmm. I think that you need to put Harley in crazy clothes, like wacky clothes because she's cuckoo, but they also fit. Like and it then, doesn't oh, seem girl, out of place. Um, Alice uh, Ber- Bergaga, Bergaga, I can't remember her name. But anyway, yeah, she's, she's a chick from uh, Queen of Self. And, yeah, uh, Soul it, Sora. Yeah, it's good to see her mm-hmm. uh, in something. In something. Mm-hmm. I think so she's pretty you, good in that. If you guys missed everybody, John we Cena have, is uh, up in here, too. Yeah, as uh, John Cena is um, Peacemaker, Christopher Smith, mm-hmm. who's fucking, who's uh, such a dick. But Idris Elba is playing uh, Bloodsport, which is uh, Robert Du Bois, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinzel, Harley Quinn. Um, Joel Keenaman is uh, Captain Rick Flag again. Jai Courtney's coming back as George Digger Harkness, Captain Boomerang. Peter Capaliti is playing um, the Thinker or Clifford DeVoe. Uh, and then we also talked about Alice Barga, played by Soul Sorora. Pete Davison, which it was crazy to see him in here. I was like, where the fuck did Pete Davison come from? Yeah. His character is definitely dying, but he's going to provide a lot of laughs. laughs. I feel like, because kind of like Deadpool, when everybody was dying, that you're like, oh, he's going to be a good character. I feel like that's going to happen to Pete. But he's playing Blackguard as uh, Richard Hertz. David Smochin is playing Abner Crow. I'm going to uh, play that, uh, that fandom, too. For okay, it. cool. Continue. Um, Polka Dot Man, Michael Rooker, who's fucking looking like uh, who did it and what for is playing Brian Derlin <laughs> as Savant. But I his his fucking long blonde Swedish hair reminds me of season two of a uh, uh, um, uh, Umbrella Academy kind of. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's so good. T uh, Tia Wyatt, Tika Wyatt TT is going to be in the film. I don't know who he's playing, but we have Nathan Fillion, which I'm glad that he is actually going to be in a DC film playing Floyd TDK Belkin or Arm Fallout Boy. Uh, and then Storm Reed is playing uh, Tallulah Du Bois, a blood sports teenage daughter. So it's another father daughter connection. It's kind of weird how they're doing it with the black characters because they did that with Deadshot, which was Will Smith. And now they're doing it with, you know, Idris Elba as blood sport. Yeah. Um, and then who else? They had Weasel in here. Uh, Viola Davis is Amanda Waller. Uh, My Ling Ning is Mongal. Uh, who else? Oh, yeah. Flula Borg is the Javelin, which I was like, why the fuck do we have the Javelin? This is well, just I mean, that's a what crazy you wanted, fucking movie. You know, like you said, expandable yeah. people. Um, no. So, yeah. Uh, I think the next one we have is The Flash. Okay, season so seven. I dropped out like two seasons ago. I dropped out but... about five. Oh, God, dude. Maybe three. I think I went up to all the way to season three of Flash. Um, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm I just, watching. it just got, no, I think I made a little bit past season three. I don't know. It just got weird, man. It just, yeah, because there's I mean, too much stuff going on. Then when I came back to it, well, it wasn't as bad as Arrow, but. I feel like Arrow was stronger towards the end. Like you, you should have went back to Arrow. It it got pretty strong, and then it would have touched you because it was like a father 
because he has two kids so it's like a father's tale like a redemption and this is all about family who oliver yeah like okay. hardcore it, it like the the so they went far anyway let's talk yeah, about flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah uh flash he's a seven do you know anything that's going on <laughs> i like from the trailer it's um a female mirror master which is fucking i i don't give a fuck who mirror master is but promoting it as as female and she is strong and powerful and confident that's fucking amazing for little girls to look up to because she outthinks Barry and you see that she's trapped Iris in the mirror world. And so there's a mirror version of Iris. So Iris's character has to not go crazy in this fake world. Barry's trying to figure out how to get Iris back, but still have to deal with fake Iris and need her in the world they're at. Barry's losing his speed. Uh, and he only has so much speed left. He's trying to build a machine to give him temporary access to the speed force, but it doesn't seem to work. So, it's, and, so the speed and, force is giving him the deuces. Yeah, but I'm out. This wow. he and up. Oh, he it's been a good ride. Up. It's been a good yeah. ride, Barry. It's uh, time there to is go. the the black guy, and I think she's eight or the white girl right there. Um, or saw just a minute ago, they are new people to Star Labs because apparently Barry going back to the past changes the motherfucking timeline. Yeah, Duh. which we know. That. Yeah. Kind of knew that was going to happen one day. Yeah. So he's Cisco and um, Caitlin are still here, but we got two new people, which kind of like and, uh, Arrow, we got a black here. tech. Who? Joe. Ain't that oh yeah. Her yeah oh yeah joe joe's booty's still around he yeah, got yeah, he got yeah, yeah. joe was his ladies yeah. yeah yeah so joe, joe daddy home. joe's still here um but yeah barry's just kind of struggling with that and trying to figure out how to get his speed back and people are gonna die because he doesn't have speed you know superhero shit you know he could you know drink some fucking red bull and shit it gives you wing don't it yeah yeah, yeah. fly up there um What's next on the list? Uh, next on the list, and this is the last trailer that I have moved yeah. over, so we could take a little. Break oh, Wonder after Woman this, is the Wonder Woman trailer, bro. Um, this shit. Hold on, real this quick. trailer. Uh, okay. All right, go ahead. Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four is like Stranger Things the movie, but also with another great DC film and everything that we're seeing, like the Batman is outside of the justice league universe. That looks like it's going to be a great fucking film. Just like the Joker was the second wonder woman film looks like it's going to be really good with Kristen wig. I can't recognize her as Sheeta. Um, they play on Diana being out of place, always having to get back up like they did with uh, captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. But this time she gets knocked down this time. It's, emotional it's her heart it's she's still having to find herself and they bring back uh um steve who is dead isn't it steve trevor steve trevor i think i'm like blanking right now but i can't put my hand on who this is that's controlling the world by speaking to him he's fulfilling their greatest wishes mm -hmm. and he's like yeah just tell me your greatest wishes can come true and Kristen Wiig is basically saying she wants to be better than Wonder Woman because she has all this power. She has this gifted life. She doesn't know how to use it. She wants to be an apex predator. Boom, she turns into Cheetah. And this fight scene between Wonder Woman and, and Cheetah? Yeah, it looked pretty good. Dude, she grabbed her by the neck and she landed on her feet. The, the, the aesthetics, the CGI, um, even her gaining her abilities and showing her power is something else. But the action with Wonder Woman is still off the charts. I am I love what Patty Jenkins is doing with Wonder Woman and showing... Yeah, keeping it a little bit classic. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the CGI work looks like classic uh, Wonder Woman. And like you said, mixed with, you know, of course, you know, modern day age. Uh, yeah. I like how you, it feels like it's in, in 1984. Yeah. And this movie has Hardcore. been going through a lot uh, because of what's uh, going yeah. on now. And even before the pandemic, it was going through a lot of delays and and, and whatnot. Because this movie was originally supposed to be dropped in 2019, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Tell in 2019. Mm hmm Like around Thanksgiving-ish. You know, in the holiday season. But yeah, that's what I thought. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's you want to... Love, romance, comedy is going to be good. But, uh, yeah, let's take a pause for the cause. That way you can have the other trailers. We'll come back, we'll talk about them, and then we'll head into Anime and Manga of the Month. And then wrap up this uh, this turkey sausage sandwich. That's what I think today is a turkey sausage sandwich. Hmm, sounds interesting. It, it is a little bit.
Hey folks, this is Elijah 5000 and Monica Robinson. And we're your host of A Little Bit of Anime. Your number one stopping spot for all the latest anime's news and reviews. If you want to join in all the fun and anime goodness, then make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts and Podbean. And please join us every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Elijah underscore 5000. And remember, please brighten your day with, with a, little a little bit of anime. anime. Hey everybody, this is Reverend Shaw. I'm Delisa. And I'm like father. Like daughter. And we just gonna hang out with you. We just gonna kind of talk about father-daughter relationships. The good, the bad, the ugly. When we like each other, when we don't like each other. And I hope Delisa don't clam up on me. Because that could be possible. <laughs> we- Hello and welcome. I'm Adam. And I'm Richard. Ever wish you could make an impact in your community, become a better leader, influence positive change? Then check us out every Tuesday for in-depth interviews into the lives of the leaders and influencers in the great state of Oklahoma, those that are bringing the change and making the impact. We will shine the spotlight on the things that they and their organizations are doing to make the lives of fellow Oklahomans better. Check us out on Podbean, Spotify, and iTunes every Tuesday and subscribe, listen, rate, and share. Also follow us on Facebook at Adam and Rich in the forum and Instagram and Twitter on AR-15 in the 405. Take a shot with AR-15 in the 405. Hey, this is your boy Frog. I'm here with Chris, Justin, and Philip, and we host Turn On The Game, the podcast. The show consists of four men commentating on the sports world. His Strictly Opinion show is as if you were sitting on the couch watching a game with your boys. And you can follow us on Twitter at TurnOnThe underscore game. You can hit us up on our Facebook page at TurnOnTheGame. And you can even follow us on Instagram at TurnOnTheGame. Or you can listen to us on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher by searching Turn On The Game. You can email us at TurnOnTheGame, the number four, at gmail.com. Turn On The Game is sponsored by Blackened Studios, Oklahoma City's premier podcasting studio. Turn On. Do you want to work in the... <laughs> I didn't realize I forgot to switch over to the pause menu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whoopsies. Uh, mm-hmm. Trying to put all that uh, back together uh, was, uh, hopefully I got it. Um, but Elijah, go ahead and do like a re- quick recap of what we just went over. Okay, so what we uh, talked about, we had a couple of videos, or the ones that we saw, talked about first from DC Fandom was the uh, Matt Reeves, uh, the Batman starring Robert Pattinson, uh, Jeffrey Wright. Uh, we have Zoe Kravitz. Uh, we also talked about the Suicide Squad, directed by James Gunn, who now that he's done with this is jumping back over to Marvel to direct the next Guardians of the Galaxy 3. We also hit on Wonder Woman 1984 with Gal Gadot and Kristen Stewart as uh, Cheetah. And then we talked about the season seven of The Flash, how Mirror Master beat the fuck out of The Flash. He ain't got no speed. He ain't got no his wife. And there's nothing he can do about it. And people are dying. And Barry's crying and there's no more run Barry run it's just no no fun Barry no fun uh, but right. I think that's it so yeah this morning, what we got first NFL buddy uh, you got in breaking news let's talk about the uh, 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 this is the Batman Gotham Knights. Oh, okay, so Gotham. National news: An explosion Gotham rocked Knights Gotham City earlier today. We are now able to confirm uh, that billionaire uh, philanthropist Bruce Wayne's version, I guess, or multiplayer version of what the fuck you got? Hey, 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 hey! I told you <laughs> it got real. All okay. right, sorry, it sorry. It got real, man. Uh, it's Rocksteady's version. I apologize uh, for all the watchers. I'm sorry. Uh, Okay, yeah. yeah, it's just whatever. Uh, it's Rocksteady's version of the Arkham series, but it doesn't place, take place in Arkham. Basically, Batman has died, is what this trailer is saying. He sent out a code black to everybody. Black. Uh, and by everybody, Drake. he means like, you know, to his teammates yeah. uh, Catwoman, Batwoman, or not Catwoman, but Bat. This like message Batgirl, automatically triggered when uh, I destroyed Nightwing, the cave and everything. Red Robin, who we both Red know Hood. won't take long for Gotham's criminals to realize the Batman is gone. And so, um, 
and they on the basically are protecting Gotham and City now. And you get to change bad. between them. And what it shows, they actually put out a seven-minute trailer, which is on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash show. And I'm leaving in that trailer, the trailer, as Batwoman or Batgirl is heading to some of the technology is outdated. Gotham joined, so but it has the gear you need and all my files. Online. Games like the up to four players. I've always had my back when I needed you. Special moves. Special I know you'll combos, keep Gotham safe. Uh, powering up different techniques, good weapons, luck. and it, it just looks and really, goodbye. really good. It looks fun. It reminds me of a uh, mix between Left 4 Dead and uh, the Arkham. Really cool. Yeah, no, it, it oh. does look good, hands down. Like it looks, it looks very good. Uh, I'll, I saw this on Instagram on the Life Baby Show uh, Facebook or Instagram page. Guys, when I stay up to date on all the trailers, check definitely follow that page. Um, I can learn to get it's okay. No, but anyway, good, but next, I, I really up on, uh, next up on our list is yeah, we're gonna talk about Black Adam. Okay, okay so you know, this is. Oh, okay, so this was cool. We'll talk about both trailers. They did two separate trailers, but I think this one. This one is Black Adam talking about himself. He's like, yeah, I've, I've been called for my way of keeping justice been called brutal, I and they want to stop me. And he's, he's talking about their names. Like, they call themselves heroes. Hawkman, um, Dr. Oh, Fate, and the new recruits. And who are the new recruits on this one? Dr. Um, Fate. I can't remember. Well, I hate none of them. And their new recruits. Well, Black Adam, you know, he's Cyclops. kind of like Sinestro. Like he's like, if you're jaywalking, you get a bolt, in a, a bolt Adam lightning Smasher. in your ass. He's like Zeus to the. They up. call themselves and the your ass is It's today society. An organization. Well, that everybody will wear a mask if Black Adam. Was oh just shit, just hell strong. yeah. Shit, Black Adam well, would just be like, yeah, they're not gonna make it. You would have still got They're not gonna make it. We're not gonna try. But I'm, I'm watching the trailer now, trying to figure out the Black last Adam two. Uh, Gigantimus, I think. Um, I have an honor for this That's green dress. dress, green dress, bitch. But yeah, but so <laughs> so uh, the second trailer was oh, actually talking about him. He's he's like the I've only thing I knew in my moment. life was you know chains around my for neck. A when he was raised from a slave, and he's like in this, this era, is the in one. this utopia they had, they lived amongst. This is the one that's going that to gave change him power, everything. And he instilled his justice. And they wanted to correct me. They sealed me away for 5,000 years. Now I'm free. And this, he, this motherfucker sounded like Mike Tyson. He's like, I ain't never going back. And, uh, and this is when we have to see uh, Monsieur Rock yeah. uh, looking like Black Adam. Looking yeah, like, like Black Adam. Black Adam has, he's Egyptian. He has that skin. Years ago, that was melanin in his skin. So it's nice to see him power be work on this representative. Yeah. 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 And but I think most of just the way he talks, he has that arrogant kind of pride for chest out. Uh, just a hero. swagger in his voice. So I know whenever he's battling Hawkman and these Instead, four, they got it's going to be a good ass battle. And he's not going to go away because we we also heard about Shazam 2 is starting production here pretty soon. So, you got to figure that him and Shazam are going to clash at the end of that film, or Shazam's going to be headed to him because later, uh, the wizard has told him about Black I'm Adam. Free. He, he's the only one that can stop. And him, I give you, know? you my word. What we got next? We got next, sir, is the Justice again. League Snyder Cut. Snyder Cut. Darner, this... what is it, five, six hour long movie? Yeah, I said yeah. Right? Yeah. Five, six. Yeah. six it's something like this this because there's so cool. much extra footage. Like, First he said they weren't doing any reshoots. Then we get actual. This looks beyond con conceptual art and conceptual. They they went through these phases because we see Dark Side right at the beginning of the fucking deal with the Omega in his chest. I was like, oh, this motherfucker is mad, and, and he's fighting. He's like on this planet beating their ass. So I was like, okay, this is this would have been nice to have because we could actually identify with, hey, Dark Side should not be fucked. With. Especially if we see him in action. Like, we never saw Thanos in action until he came down. And you're like, oh, um, he fucked up Hulk. He made, he made Hulk, baby Hulk. So I think that starting off with uh, Dark Side was, was very good. And then you get to see, um, like, uh, Clark Kent wearing the black suit. Like, Superman wearing this black suit. Him 
in the field with Lois and his mom. His mom showing up at Lois's place. You get to see all this, th- these things that didn't happen in the film that would have tied certain scenes so to together. To you hear Batman talking about them fighting together. They never stood, you know, a chance with us united. And that's how it ties into that Justice League. And it shows like iconic symbols of them standing side by side, going into battle with Steppenwolf or Darkseid. And I think there's another villain uh, that they added into this as well that they fought, that the CGI looked fucking um, like the Sentinels from uh, X Men Days of Future Past. It looked very, very well done. And I think this would have change people's minds and opinions about the film and it mm-hmm. would have represented the justice league in a different light would it have been how better long than was what the original Marvel? film just out of curiosity oh that, that motherfucker was like two hours i think and this one is actually legitly four hours long right i, I think yeah i think I, 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 like I think i'm I not speaking on it but yeah, I, I think i saw that on ign um but it looks really good just long and, yeah but it seems like you get to see more. You get to see Barry Allen actually save Iris, who is also a black Iris, which everybody's like, damn, we got a black Iris on the show and we got a black Iris in the film. And they cut that whole scene to show his sincerity and why he saves people. Uh, they cut the scene where he's like, hey, if this guy has gone and conquered other worlds, you know, and they couldn't beat him and those people fought him off, what the fuck do y'all think we could do? And it's like real conversations instead of him being like this goofy, aloof kid that is learning how to fight in this big world war and Batman kind of taking it kind of seriously, not kind of not taking it seriously. It seems like it's at a higher state. It even the fucking, uh, the HBO max, um, thumbnail of it just seems like it's an epic film because all the members of the justice league are standing side by side. And it's got that tan kind of bronze on it. Yeah. I mean, it's just a different feel. I think it's going to be better, but I, I reserve judgment. Yeah, I it looks really. It looks good. good though. I'll put it like that. Um, I'm yeah, more two hours to watch long. this. Uh, you said the first one was two hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think. Uh, let me see if I have any other ones. Cause so I moved everything over and it moved like mm-hmm. everybody's videos over. Like turn on the games, one mic, one voices. <laughs> what is going on with yeah. this? Uh, uh, it's this all because I don't have my laptop, so Justice I'm trying to do League? everything on the phone, oh. on remote, and also. On oh, the, oh, anyways, I ain't about to explain that to because you guys probably think I'm talking in Japanese right now. But I think that's actually the last trailer <laughs> I have. Oh, uh, so you didn't have the other video game, the Gotham Knights. Oh, you're talking about the, uh, the yeah, Gotham Squad. Knights, the Suicide. Yeah, we did the Dark Knight, the Gotham Knight, the Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Mm, oh. Okay, so this one, I'll oh, give you all play by yep, play. There it is. Bam. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah. So this was really cool because it played up the characters. It played up the communication between Amanda Waller and the Suicide Squad. She's like, Suicide Squad, you need to get over here because there's an alpha level threat and blah, blah, blah. And Harley Quinn's like, yeah, we're on the way. And you come to find out. Like, y'all just watch the trailer. And you'll kind of see where I'm going. What's up, Vader? I think you're going to have to voice over it because there's no volume on it. Okay, so uh, as Harley Quinn is doing her fingers and stuff like that, she's like, yeah. Uh, she's like, have you, um, Amanda Waller's on the, the comm saying, have you um, engaged the target? And she's like, yeah, we're engaging now. And then as she's moving her fingers, she's like, ugh, ugh. And she's still holding the button to to the comms. So Amanda Waller hears, ugh, ugh, ugh. And then somebody shoots the box of pizza that she was like reaching towards. She's like, oh, somebody's down. And then she starts yelling something to Captain Boomerang. And then she lets go of the comm. And Boomerang is just like, shut the fuck up. And you just see them as they're supposed to be helping and engaging in this big world war. They're just chilling out on top of this roof. Yeah, kicking it. Which Mm -hmm. sounds like the Suicide Squad, right? Exactly. Because they don't really get active until like it's it's, it's there. It's deep. It's like, oh, man, like we have potentially lost. Uh, let's at least go out with a bang instead of getting our heads blown off. Because mm-hmm. uh, that's how the Suicide Squad works. Uh, they got these Always. little contraptions around their necks or embedded inside their, In their necks. their brains. Yeah, it's inside their brains uh, that can cause them to blow up. And mm-hmm. you see King Shark playing with the um, um, the Batman balloon. Mm-hmm. And like during that time, they're, they're talking about uh, the last mission. And he's like, yeah, if you wouldn't have missed in de- uh, Deadshot's like, you, 
motherfucker, you must be confused. And he's like, I never miss. And everybody's like, you never miss a shot. We know you say that every fucking time. And it's just like this buddy, buddy cop heist type movie that you would just see all these bad guys together. It feels like what the first Suicide Squad honestly should have been mm-hmm. and could have been. And then it goes into what the gameplay actually looks like of this game, which feels like uh, Left for Dead. Uh, mm. Just because you got four characters, you can all play at once. They all have How special... much remind me a little bit of... Uh, uh, yeah, I can see Left 4 Dead. Um, yeah. I guess I was thinking about uh, Last of Us, but you're right. Left 4 Dead does look like that. Mm. A little bit of uh, uh, Infamous. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, with the, with the tracing that they're doing and Mm-hmm. Uh, the different colors to represent, you know, a little bit of different characters and whatnot. Uh, and they don't overdo it, too. It's it's subtle enough to where I'm like, you know, I like that. Because if it would have been, like, a lot of lime greens and shit and neon oranges, I'd have been like, uh, I don't really need that. Yeah. But, yeah, it looks good. It looks good. And that's, that's the last trailer we got, mm-hmm. um, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, all these trailers are uh, uploaded to Patreon dot com forward slash Elijah Bailey show you can look at everything so you can watch both trailers of Black Adam you can see the full Justice League Snyder cut again and listen to the audio uh, again this trailer Suicide Squad killed the Justice League which at the end of this trailer uh, it shows the alpha target coming in Superman and they're like oh Superman get out of here we're on an assassination mission and then he you know just vaporizes the guy that he's holding in his hand and then you know, it just kicks in. But uh, Gotham Knights, there's a sneak peek. I think it's seven minute long where you get to go through and watch the gameplay. Um, the Wonder Woman trailer. There's also a sneak peek of the Suicide Squad where they're talking behind the scenes with the actors and giving you more details about uh, that film and what James Gunn wanted to do. So join Patreon. You get all the exclusive content right there. For, it starts at one dollar a month. And I we have like, what, five tiers? Yes. Five or six tiers. And it supports yeah. us. Yeah, supports the show, keeps the lights on, Boop. Uh, and we can offer you even more exclusive content if you do so. Uh, so let's go into anime and manga of the month. Yes, anime and the manga of the month. Like Elijah said, every month we hit you with a anime that we recommend you to watch and also a manga we recommend you to read. This month, which is be our last time going over these, right? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. yep. Is, I'll start it off strong. Gold Roger, Talk about Goldie Rogers, Rogers over here, but we are in one piece. Uh, follow Monkey D. Luffy, who wants to become the king of all pirates, along with his crazy kooky uh, shipmates, um, as they journey this adventure to become the pirate kings. Uh, pretty much. I mean, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's full it's, of adventure. It's so weird. I'm loving it. Oh, go ahead. They say, well, I was going to say, they say they're looking for One Piece, but every time, like, somebody gives Luffy, like, legit, like, hey, One Piece is right here. He's like, ah, I don't fucking want Let me that. go the long route. But this anime was originally released back in July 20, or uh, Black July 22nd of 1997. Uh, it's about 20 seasons long. Yeah. 45 episodes. So, yeah. Uh, you can watch some of it on Netflix. I mean, One Piece is pretty much everywhere right now. Um, yeah. So I only recommend you, you give it a shot. Uh, I have started it, and it has it has consumed me so much that it's hard for me to watch literally anything else right anything now. Else. Just because I think really it, it has slow moments, but I think yeah. mainly it's just because I, I want to catch up. Um, you know, yeah, I, you I got wanna, sucked in now. Yeah, I, I got sucked in. I got sucked in. So right That's now, I think I'm gonna. Episode 114. Um, oh, dude. I was thinking about that. era, arc. Um, How do you like to that so too far? Much on it. You say what? How are you liking it so far? Like, uh, what has been the thing that stood out the most from beginning to now? Where we're at Alabasta. <sighs> Probably. I could tell I'm just now really getting in. Um, mm-hmm. But just the, the uniqueness of the fighting. How everybody yeah. does have such unique fighting uh, yeah. techniques and skills and it's not really you know copied over and over again um mm-hmm. you see the bond that luffy has with his with his shipmates um yeah it's, it's pretty good like i said it's, it's goofy a lot of times uh most of the time it is goofy but once it kind of gets serious um yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good watch once you get in that mindset because it's like it's hard to describe but i'm going to try <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, 
Saki K mm -hmm. mixed with Dragon Ball Z. And I say that because there's like a lot of you know, there's a lot of weird goofy, shit. Yeah, a lot of weird, goofy elements in it that can, you know, easily get you distracted. Um, but a solid narrative and fighting though. Yeah, a solid narrative and fighting, and then you know, you want to see where the story, how is this connected to this and and whatnot. So uh, I could definitely tell why it has this accolades that it does, and it's you know um, why people that praise it and, and love it. Yeah, the number one spot. Um, so That's yeah, good, though. yeah. For it to be in nine ninety seven, it, it, it aged really Bro. well. It aged really uh, well. It, yeah. it, I feel like it aged better than Naruto. Dude, no, who you tell? Like I, I kept feeling like well. them six hundred the episodes. Like, were Shippuden like, is good, dude. but early Naruto, uh, it didn't age too well in my mm -hmm. opinion. It was too. It was all too old school. Yeah, the music was weird. Yeah, it was just, it was rough. <laughs> it's really, really, really rough. Uh, <laughs> like, but one piece, yeah, yeah, like but, dogs barking in the back yeah, of the music. It's, it's like, pretty awkward. But like I said, One Piece does a good job. So yeah, blending it all together. Mm -hmm. Man, One Piece's theme music will have you like calling up your friends like One Piece, yeah. and everybody. You got to make motherfuckers sing in choirs and shit. But uh, yeah, uh, let's head over to manga of the month. This has no music to it. I wish this had an anime ad adaptation, but it doesn't. You have to read the manga. Sun Ken Rock. Ken left Japan pursuing the woman he loves to Korea. However, while she became a policewoman, Ken somehow wound up in a gang and even became their boss. The man who came from Japan now rises in Korea. It's Korean rock action with a powerful punch. Uh, I'm one of my top five favorite korean manga out there you guys have to read it and the hairstyle looks like almost an early adaptation of dr stone uh, especially our main uh, character yeah. ken because he had that hair but if you want to talk about uh series with chiseled physiques solid actual fighting and then high stakes drama you've got to throw sun ken rock in there with tough and with bakti mm. it's right up there Yeah, i remember him. you was telling me about that back when we was working out Mm, man it's really good so anime this is the last time we're mentioning it but it's up on it's everywhere netflix funimation crunchyroll wherever you look one piece is there that's the anime of the month and manga of the month is sun ken rock mm. and that wraps it up for the bailey bugle a little long today because we had videos to watch go to patreon.com forward slash elijah bailey show there you can see all the trailers that are out that way you don't miss anything that came from dc fandom uh this saturday and uh, there's also panels that'll be posted up as well. Uh, some of the panels were, I'm excited for some of these. I think there's a, um, static shock movie coming. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, static. It's the homie. And he never, like all his series got canceled, but to show like we had black Panther. So now we have a teenager that's from America showing what it's like to be black in America that also has an obligation because he has superpowers mm -hmm. and chooses Anyways. to do the right thing. Unlike Thank, Killmonger. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, but that's it for today's show. The Bailey Bugle. This is episode 233. I'm Elijah 5,000. I am the underscore bucket D and you can find black at studios information at black at studios.com black at studios on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also email us at podcast at black at studios.com. And you can find anything and everything you want to know about the Elijah Bailey Show on our official Facebook page, the Elijah Bailey Show, or send your emails to Elijah Bailey Show at gmail.com. Now, if you don't like sending emails, you can simply subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. You can follow and leave a comment on Podbeam, and you can add us to your playlist on Spotify. You can also find us on, uh, I think we're on Pandora now. We're also on Alexa TV. We're also on Google Podcasts. And then what's the other one? Stitcher. Stitcher. There's another one. Just Google just, us. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, we're everywhere. But you can find us everywhere in the atmosphere, in your nostrils. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Elijah Bailey Show. Just chop off the W on the end. That's S H O. I'm Elijah 5000. I'm the underscore buckety. And we'll catch your ass in the next podcast.
Hey, what's up, everybody? Elijah 5000 here. Me and the Buckety appreciate it so much that you download this show each and every week. Again, we drop every Thursday. If you're new to the Elijah Bailey Show, go to Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Spotify, or wherever you listen to this auditorial pleasure that you get weekly, and just subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you, and I'll catch your ass in the next podcast. Yeah, well, somebody better give him a call and place that son of a bitch under arrest.